Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Maple Crest Church. What beautiful weather we've been having. It's just fantastic. In fact, I think many of us, I'm sure, have already brought our parkas into our closets in expectation of incredible cold weather. Well, my parka is uh, looking a little crooked at me and wondering what's going on. I feel like I'm just hanging around. So, what we know, the cold weather is coming. But it's warm in here. Lord, we thank you for this time we can come together and worship you. And uh, we, we thank you for everybody that's listening in. And uh, we just ask that God would bless everyone. Park Theatre has renovations practically done. So um, news will be coming about what the future is, us, is about us for us regarding meeting again. Uh, we are always happy and excited about any prof prophetic words that uh, you could pass on to us. And um, if you receive a word, please share it at maplecrestprophecy at gmail.com so that we can actually hear your prophetic words and uh, process them for community. Also, we want to thank everyone who has been donation, giving donations towards the church. We really appreciate that. There are two ways to do this. One is by text, where you text Maplecrest to the number 73256. And the other way, of course, is e-transfer. And um, you send that to maplecrestchurch.ca also. And uh, when you do that um, in e-transfer, make sure you include some contact information so that you can get a receipt in return. So Lord, we just thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you that you provide for ministry, and we thank you for everyone that has given and is giving, and those that give in the future. May your, your word go out, touch hearts, and your Holy Spirit change people's lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful. God is such an encourager. You know, when we sometimes face difficulties, God says, I'm here. You are never alone, and my spirit is here to comfort you and to lift up your head. And I experience his goodness. Got a wonderful song to celebrate the goodness of God. And I just want to sing, everybody sing this morning that God is good. He is a good God. Hallelujah.
you gave me your heart your spirit flows through my veins you gave me your eyes you gave me your heart your spirit flows through my veins you gave me your eyes you gave me your heart your spirit flows through my veins you gave me your eyes you gave me your heart your spirit flows through my veins oh you gave me your eyes you gave me your heart you had a plan right from the start i know who i am cause i know who you are you are a good god all that i need to know is this you are a good god the maker of heaven calls me his you are a good god all that i need to know is this you are a good god the maker of heaven calls me his you are a good sadness that overwhelms the darkness to just rest in that knowing that God is good this is a prayer that I've shared with you before that God had really spoke to my heart about not letting anything come between us when it comes to fear when it comes to any kind of other voice that tries to drown out this sense of peace the peace that passes understanding. You know, we go through things that sometimes <laughs> we don't know how we would survive it. And God, he comes and he gives us this supernatural peace. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, my peace I leave with you. And we receive that as a gift, the gift of peace. And then we know that we have whatever we ask, hallelujah. And we know that there is no weapon that formed against us by the enemy, any kind of weapon, whatever that looks like, feels like, will not prosper. When darkness closes in on every side, when battles rage and when the waters rise, I fear no evil, for I know the truth. Nothing can separate my heart from you. Cause there's no weapon stronger than your love. There's no weapon stronger than your love. No height, no depth.
shield around me The power of heaven in your mighty hand You go before me You won my victory And in this promise I forever stand No weapon against me. He's scattered into many parts. It's a mess for the enemy because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. There's no weapon stronger than your love. No, there's no weapon stronger receiving the gift of God's love. Thank you, Father. Mm, it's such a blessing, huh? You're so good and kind. The kindness of God, wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. ways are higher. We drop the pretense and we drop even expectations, hey? Sometimes when we have expectations for people, hmm, we can just let it go and trust God because he's got those people. He has blessings for us everywhere we go. We just receive that. You know, in the good and the bad. We can receive the blessing. We can see through it because God has a blessing. Hallelujah. On the other side of pain, just have to look and see that God is good. Lord bless you.
purposes are yes and amen towards us. His blessing is yes, he says yes, I want to bless you. favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for May your favor. We'll just keep playing. Hallelujah. Just keep playing a little bit here. Oh, you, Father. May your blessing come. May your blessing come on generation after generation. On everybody watching right now, Lord, we pray your blessing Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. watching right now, the people here helping out, Lord, we just pray your favor. We stand before you. We pray that you would come and you would bring your blessing. Soften hearts. Good to 
every smile. Jesus, I'm smiling at you. How can you not smile back? <laughs> he wants to see you smile. so beautiful as always such a blessing such a blessing to be with all of you all of you be with all of you online right now let's just change this out we have a different kind of message for you this morning we are uh, kind of going to have a message but we're also going to have a little bit of a kind of family meeting uh, to this morning so you know, we pray that this would bless you, that this would be an encouraging message to you. And, uh, but I want you to know that I've got kind of two things that I'm doing this morning. I'm, you know, bringing the message, and, uh, but I'm also kind of talking about Maple Crest and where we're going, what we're doing, and, and how we're going to go about doing all that, and, and what we feel like the Lord is saying to us as a church. And uh, so just know that going in. But uh, either way, we're trying to speak the words of Jesus. We're trying to bring the words of Jesus to each person. And so I still feel like this is a blessing. I still feel like this can, if you're not part of our community here at Maple Crest, I feel like this may still encourage you or help you to help bring understanding. Father, thank you. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for what you're doing in our community. Thank you for uh, guiding us and loving us. We have been through lots of different things and uh, lots of different challenges, but even through all of these things, I have felt your presence. I've felt you guiding us. Sometimes I would have liked it to be more clear, but you are faithful, God. You are faithful, and uh, each step you have uh, been with us, even in the difficult moments. And so, Lord, I just continue to pray. There's been this nice prophetic message of the steps being laid before us and the, being covered with sand, but it's going to be clear as we go. It's going to be clear as we go. It's just going to blow the sand away, and, and as we step into the wilderness, as we step into the unknown, you will make your path known to us, and I just pray that over our church. Lord, we don't want to do things without you. We want to do things with you. We don't want to th do things that are convenient. We want to do things that's, the things that are on your heart. Uh, how do we love people when we disagree? Well, right now there is a disagreement in our culture. I mean, you may not be aware, but you probably are, or maybe you're listening to this at some time in the future, and we still have it online. But right now, when, I'm, when we're talking about this, we have a disagreement in our culture around vaccination. To get vaccinated or to not get vaccinated. There are two groups. The vaccinated group is government approved. They are free to go to different places and do different things. Still some restrictions for everyone, but generally quite a bit more freedom to be vaccinated and to have the proof you can go places and you can do things. And then you have the unvaccinated who are restricted, who have the government saying, please get vaccinated and we will not allow you to do different things and we will not give you evidence of your vaccination because you're not vaccinated. And their lives are restricted. And there's huge conflicts, not just with the government, not just with who gets to go to see a movie, or who gets to go to a restaurant, or who gets to visit in a home with more than one unvaccinated group. There are huge rifts in families. This is the biggest toll, I think. When I hear people and they're suffering, the two big ones aren't whether they get to go to a restaurant. The two big ones are, my employer is asking me, and making it a condition of my employment that I get vaccinated and I'm on leave now because of it. I'm, on, I'm not able to work. I'm looking for another job. There's pain there. And the other big one that I hear, the other painful moment is my family won't let me meet with them until I get vaccinated. There's pain in these lives of people. This is causing real division. These are real consequences 
and there's pain right away, and that pain grows over time. As you create division, it transforms from a difference of opinion to a difference of opinion with a feeling to a difference of opinion with a strong feeling, and then it moves from, oh, this is a person who has a different opinion but is still reasonable, and it moves to, this is a person with a different opinion, and they're wrong. They're not just wrong, but they are they're bad. They're a bad person. This is a character issue. That's where this moves to. And it doesn't take all that long. And oftentimes in experiments, if you run experiments on these things, it takes hours sometimes to get to that position. But people try when they're adults and they, they see it, they try. They try to say, to, to remain that this is just an opinion, but it eventually just seeps into people that this is not just an opinion. This is a character issue. This is a person who deserves issues in their lives. And it goes to groups too. This isn't just within families and it isn't just within one life, but it's within groups. It's within the churches. There are now pro-vaccine churches and there are anti-vaccine churches maybe. At least that's the perception. I mean, if you talk to these churches, they may not label themselves that way, but they may. I'm pretty sure that after today, you will maybe have a feeling that Maple Crest is either pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine. I'm not sure how, you'll, how you will label us, but we will probably be labeled. If I just mention the word COVID and you get some tone of voice from me, if you perceive me in one way or the other, you will probably paint the whole thing with one brush because it's simpler. Our minds want simplicity. We don't want to think about the complex. We don't want to think, oh, Maple Crest is like kind of both and they, they have different feelings and they have different things going on and it's complicated and it takes more than, you know, one sentence to describe. You don't want to think that. You want to just be like, hey, they're pro or they're anti. Let's be simple here. Our, that's what our minds, our minds have, are very limited. They don't, they don't have the energy for complexity. They will simplify things and it usually works quite well. I don't have to think that much as I get ready in the morning, I brush my teeth. I'm not thinking, my, my brain has simplified it. It's, it's made it a routine. We simplify things because our brains are actually quite limited. It's amazing how it creates efficiency and you will likely create efficiency over Maple Crest. Lord help me. Lord help us all. Now is agreement important? Do we need to agree on COVID? Do we need to have debate? Do we need to have discernment? Yes. Yes, the Lord is interesting, interested in every part of our lives, even when they're offensive. I don't want to back away, I do. Lord, I do want to back away from the uh, disagreement. But that doesn't mean the Lord wants me to. I don't like to get entangled in these things. I just want to be in a group, and I want to be worshiping the Holy Spirit. I want to be in a little honeymoon, doing my own thing. But the Lord calls us to stuff. He calls us to love each other in addition to loving him. And so here we are. Is agreement, is agreement important? Yes. The Lord wants to work on you. He wants us to get together and he wants us to figure these things out. He wants us to discern. There's a big theme in the Bible of discernment. He won't let us get away with it. He gives us time. He gives us tons of patience, but he is interested in how we feel about different things. So that's true, and that is, and, I, and you heard me, I don't want to talk about it, and today I'm not. Maybe I will one day, but I'm not today. So this is going to be, the, this is the big confusion that I'm concerned about for today's messages. Is Cyrus going to talk about who's right and who's wrong? Now that's an important message, and it's not the one I'm speaking today. So my goal, which I may fail at miserably, is to not say anything that helps you to say Cyrus feels this way. So if you hear that, it was unintentional. Unintentional. I am I'm trying not to have a tone in one direction or another. I'm not here to talk about who's right and why, or who's wrong and why, who's more reasonable and why. That is not the purpose. It's important, but it's not the purpose of today's message. So why am I bringing it up then? Why am I not speaking about who's right and wrong? Well, it's because God has given us another message this morning, and that's how to love people when you disagree. I'm not going to try to find agreement. Again, 67% of disagreements remain. It's important to try to find agreement. It's important to work at that, but we can't wait for that, people. We can't wait for agreement. Not anymore. 
Love won't wait any longer for us to agree. He's not going to say, oh, you don't have to be with me until this is over. Now, we don't have to be at church to be with God. I get that. But God does have a mandate for us to be together. He has a mandate for us to be in community as we seek him out. And he doesn't want to wait. He wants us. We work better together, even if that doesn't sometimes seem that way. So, today we're talking about how to love in disagreement. And the answer is almost too obvious. Almost too obvious. And I'll read a passage here, one of my favorite passages. A passage that I used to love and not apply as broadly, and now I apply apply quite broadly. And it's Matthew 5, verse 43. And I'm going to read just a little bit here. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes it, he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you have, what do you do more than, than anybody else, than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you shall be perfect. That's a sentence for a whole sermon right there. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. He wants us to go for 100%. And 100% is the Lord sending the rain on everyone. He wants us to love everyone, even our enemies. Now, this seems kind of a dire passage for this. Cyrus, you're talking about how to love people in church. Why are you talking about enemies? Well, I broaden the word enemies a little bit because it's helpful for me. When I use the word enemies in the way that I would just automatically use the word enemies, I almost never use this verse because I don't think of most people with that term, enemy. Somebody who seems obviously evil and has obviously evil, like, trying to kill me people. Most people aren't trying to kill Cyrus. So I don't have any use for that verse, right? Well, no. If you define enemy as somebody who is in disagreement with you, somebody who is getting in your way, who has a different value, who is moving in a different direction, somebody who you feel if they had their way, the world would be a worse place, then I could apply this a lot. (laughs) I could apply this all over the place. Who in your life is making your life challenging. And you might say, Cyrus, really the church still. I mean, these are our brothers and sisters. These are people we love. When I'm in therapy and I'm talking to people with deep wounds and deep, deep anger, when I'm talking to people who can't control their anger, they're almost never talking about strangers. They're talking about the people who are closest to them. If you want a volatile session, do couples counseling. Those are the sessions where I have to teach therapists to stand up and be like, hey, we're not doing this. I'm not going to watch abuse in front of me. If you, want to, if you want to be in a session where there's yelling and you're worried about the session in the other room, go into a couple session. These are people who love each other. And the more that they love each other, the louder they yell. If they, if they don't yell, sometimes that's a sign that they've broken their relationship so fully that they need to re-fall in love. But if they're yelling, I'm like, they're in love. Because there's pain. Nobody can hurt you like somebody who loves you or somebody who you, I should say it differently. Nobody can hurt you like somebody that you've opened your heart to. So who causes the most pain in church? Other church members. Who causes the most pain? The people who say and feel and they're the ones who love you the most. The ones who are the most close to God. When they are the ones who hurt you, it hurts so deeply. That's where we have our strong emotions. So yes, when you're talking about people in the church, I'm talking about enemies. When people get divorced, we can do the most horrible things to each other. When we have strangers who come to church, it can be awkward. It can be fearful, uncomfortable, I don't want to get close, but we're not close. So it's just awkward and maybe anxiety-provoking. It doesn't cause the depths of pain of having a disagreement with somebody else who you love. 
We need to talk about both. But today I'm talking about these painful moments when you feel rejected by people you love, when you feel rejected by people in church, by your pastor. I have the ability to cause a lot of pain. And people have sometimes told me that I have caused them pain. Deep wounding. I didn't get into this. I didn't answer God's call to be a pastor to hurt people. I'm talking to people today who are sincere. Not people who are insincere. I'm not talking about people who are manipulating. I'm not talking about people who just want to hurt people. The people who I'm talking to today are sincere. And there's people in every camp today who are sincere. They want to follow the Lord. They want to not be offended. They're desperate. They're like, Lord, help me to love everybody. But it's so painful. They said something. Yeah, they did. They said something that hurt me. Made, them, made me feel like they think that they're closer to God. It made me feel like they don't love me. It made me feel like they don't understand me. It made me feel like they think I'm not trying to follow God, that I'm not trying to love them, that they think I'm some terrible person, that my position is completely not understandable, not something that can be honored, not something that is reasonable. They made me feel like I'm just off the wall. And it's so easy to do. All you have to do is state your opinion sometimes, and it hurts. I'm not saying that to make it light. It's real. It really hurts. Reasonable people get really hurt when other people just say what they think. But the Lord loves and Lord loves everyone, and he enjoys people who are sincere who disagree with him. We were going, we're going through the Song of Solomon, and last time I was talking about how the bride and the bridegroom, so Jesus and the church, they're in disagreement. They went through a honeymoon and they're like, yay, we're in the bedroom, we're just loving each other. And then they go and he says, he goes out of the bedroom and, and she's like, the church is like, what, where'd you go? The believer's like, Lord, where are you? And he's behind the lattice, he's kind of like looking and he's like, I'm behind here, I'm dancing on the mountains, come with me. And she says, no. She's sincere. She loves him. And she, she says, no, you go dance on the mountains. You go into ministry. I'm going to stay here in the bedroom. But she's sincere. And he calls her something interesting. He calls her his fair one, his beautiful one. He's infatuated with her even when she's in disagreement because he knows that her heart is for him. Her heart is saying yes and no at the same time. It's saying, yes, Lord, I want you, but can't we go do something else? When we disagree with God, he can still enjoy us, not even love, only love us, but enjoy us to see us as beautiful. This is so hard for us to understand. It's so contrary to how we feel. When we disagree, we want to be alone. And when we feel unclean, we want to be alone. We want to fix ourselves up. And then we want to come into the presence of God. When we feel we're clean. And this is what happens in churches too. Churches say that God loves them, but they give this message of, you've got to figure yourself out before you come into my presence. And that's what I'm nervous. That's the message I'm nervous to give, unintentionally. I don't want to give the message, we are letting people we agree with into church, and if you disagree with us, you need to figure that out before you come. I don't want to send that message. I don't want to take a position and say, this is God's position, and you need to fix yourself before you come to church. That's the, that's the feeling. That's the thing that we usually go to. We say, we're going to figure ourselves out, and then we're going to go to God. But God wants it the opposite. He wants us to go to him, build relationship, before we even talk about what's right or wrong. He's saying, you know what, we'll talk about that later. Let's get to know each other. There's lots of time to talk about your behavior. There's lots of time to talk about purity. First, let's get to know each other. 
then he'll push you and he'll say, hey, let's look at this now. Let's go into some mountain in your soul, in your spirit. Let's figure something out together now that you know who I am. And then he's not, what he, he's not going to reject you. He's going to say, come after me. Don't leave me to figure this out. Don't go hide yourself to figure this out. Come with me and we'll figure it out together. What are we saying if we say you have to leave the Spirit and figure it out and then you can come in the Spirit? The Spirit is the one who helps you figure it out. If I disagree with somebody and I want them to agree, I should be pushing them into the Spirit. Let's let the Lord talk to you. Let's let the Lord talk to your heart and let's let the Lord talk to mine. I don't know. Father, guide us. Help us to come into your presence. You are the one. I don't want to be the one to change your heart. I don't want to be the one to tell you what to do with a vaccine. I want the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and tell you what to do and what to feel. And I want to be a pastor that makes a space where you can encounter the Spirit. That's my job. There's other jobs, but that's a big one. I want to create a space where you can meet with the Spirit. Now, when he gets close to you and he starts pulling you, he may withdraw a little bit from you. He does all kinds of things to finagle with you, but he's not saying, leave me. He's saying, follow me. He's saying, come, come into my presence. Follow me. Take care of these little things. We're going to do it together. And you're beautiful as you figure it out. Lord, thank you that we are beautiful even when we don't have it all figured out. Thank you that your righteousness covers us even when we're still in disagreement with you. I don't want to take it lightly and say, oh, I'm going to do whatever I want. That's, that's just taking liberties. But if we're sincere and we're like, Lord, we want to do it your way, it's just hard, it's painful, I don't, I'm confused. He's saying, come with me. Let me cover you. Be with me and we'll figure it out together. I don't want you to pull away to figure this out. Because if you pull away and figure it out, who are you listening to? Who are you talking to? If you're leaving me to go and figure this out. Is that what we want with our kids? Do I want my kids to leave me to go figure out life problems? Do I want them to go to school and figure it out? Do I want them to talk to their friends? To figure it out, I want them to come to me. I want to talk to them about it. It's such a beautiful thing when my kids talk to me and they're like, hey, Dad, I don't know what's going on here. What's going on with this thing? And that's what the Father wants. So we're here to offer Christ to everyone. Now, we've been praying about this a little bit. We've been discerning and praying for a while and, and more recently kind of in earnest And the Lord gave one of our people a dream of offering Christ. I'm not going to get into the details, but it was offering Christ to everyone. Giving the same thing, so to speak, giving Christ to everyone. We don't want to just offer Christ to people that we agree with. So how do we do this? How do we follow the Spirit's leading to give to give up a place to encounter the Spirit to everyone. Well, it's not easy, and it's not going to be perfect. Church is messy. Nobody said it wouldn't be. It's a messy thing, and we're sorry. We only have what we have, and we can only do what we can do, and the Lord's going to make up the difference. So when you talk about who's right and who's wrong, there's two groups. I mean, there's probably more. I mean, just to say that. But generally speaking, there's two groups when you talk about who's right and who's wrong. There's the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Who's right and who's wrong, the debate starts or continues. When you talk about accepting or making a place, maybe that's a better word, making a place for everyone, loving everyone, there's more than two groups. There's actually a whole spectrum of different perspectives and ways of keeping ourselves safe. There's three main groups, main categories, and there's lots of little groups in there. There's the unvaccinated. There's the vaccinated who can be around anyone who don't care. They feel safe. Hey, I'm vaccinated. I feel safe now. 
And then there's the vaccinated who don't feel safe around the unvaccinated. There's the vaccinated who are like, hey, I'm vaccinated, but I want to keep myself safe by staying around people who are vaccinated. And there's lots of little other categories in here. There's like, well, I can do this, but I got to wear a mask. I can do this, but I got to social distance. I, can, I can't do this because of family, but I feel okay about it, but it's my family. I, I, there's like lots of little like stories. Everybody's got a story about how they feel. It's like, well, I got vaccinated, but it's been a while, so now I need a booster shot. I mean, there's lots of stories. Everybody's got different feelings. Everybody's making sense of themselves. They're trying to keep themselves safe. They're not trying to hurt anybody. They're trying to follow the Lord. They're trying to understand this in their own way. And that's true even, even, there's, that's true for the unvaccinated as well. There's people who are unvaccinated who feel like, well, I'm unvaccinated. I could be around everybody. And then there's people who are unvaccinated like, I'm unvaccinated. I can't be around anybody. There's lots of different groups in all of these. There's lots of different subcategories for sure. Now, this is when people start talking about who's right and who's wrong, and I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about that. The Lord wants to offer himself to everyone. Some churches are trying to figure this out by having a large room. It's not a bad thing. They have a large room, and they have lots and lots of precautions in the room. Things that aren't formal restrictions, but are precautions of various kinds, social distancing, you name it. Uh, hand sanitizing, temperature checks, uh, just, I mean, the list goes on, right? They've got all kinds of precautions, mask wearing, all kinds of stuff that they do in order to keep everybody safe. And what they're trying to do is create a place for the unvaccinated and those who are worried about being amongst the unvaccinated to come together because there's precautions. I love it. It's like people are trying to love everybody. It creates a situation where people can be together, but then they also can't be together. They're like, well, I could be together, but I can't really be around you because we have all these precautions in, in the way. Not a perfect solution, but hey, it's something. I'm not against it. I'm not speaking against the churches that are doing that. We can't really do that. We don't have a big church building. Some are only offering online services. That's what we were doing. That's what we're doing now. Only offering online services. But then you reject everyone. Nobody could be together. We don't want to create a space that is technically open for everyone. We want to create a space where everyone can actually come to church. That's a bit confusing. It's like, I thought you said, doesn't your church always want to be open? Yeah. There's times when you can say like, oh, well, everybody can come, but nobody's comfortable to come. Is that open? I can look at a client and I can say, hey, you signed the consent form, but now you don't want to give it away? I got your signature. I'm going to give away your report. You already signed your consent form. Now that you know the results, you want to change that? I got your consent form. We could say, well, it's technically open. You can come if you want. But if you're not comfortable to come, too bad. I don't want to do that. I don't want to just say it's technically open. I want to create spaces, or a space, preferably, where everybody can actually feel good about going, where they can actually not have to be in anxiety or not have to stop themselves from coming. I want to create spaces where people can actually come and actually encounter the Spirit. Not just say, oh, well, we, you know, everybody's allowed to come, so I want to create spaces where people can actually feel like they can come. And it's sad because with the different groups, there's no way to do it in one service. There's no way to have people who are unvaccinated in a church service with people who are saying they're not willing to be with people who are unvaccinated. And again, you could start saying who's right and who's wrong. I'm not doing that today. I want to offer Christ to everyone. So there's no way to create one service where everybody can feel comfortable. So what's the solution? Well, to get specific, here in Park Theatre, they have a mandate. It's not them. They have a mandate from the government that every group that is in their building has to be double vaccinated, church or not. That might change, I don't know. But right now, that's the mandate. It has to be a double vax facility. So, I mean, that's where we're streaming from now. This would be the double vax Sunday morning service. But we want to create a space for everyone. So we would also offer another time what we're thinking now is a Saturday night, 
of some frequency, what we're thinking right now is once a month, that's open to everyone in another location. Right now we're thinking the Oakville office. It's gonna be smaller. There's pluses and minuses to both. There's pluses and minuses to being here in Park Theater. There's pluses and minuses to being at the office. They're different kinds of spaces. They're different sizes. Both would be streamed. Park Theater here, we would stream publicly. Probably the Oakville office, we would stream through private links. It's not really a public thing. It's kind of more of a private thing. So we would still offer it to people who are in our community who want to be a part of it because we want to have everybody join together as much as possible. Each service has its pluses and minuses. Now you might feel one is better than the other. I have people who feel like one is better than the other and the other is better, I don't know. Everybody's got these different feelings. I don't know. It's sad to me. I don't want to say that this is a happy thing I'm saying, that we're going to have two different services. It is difficult for us to love and care for people who disagree with us. That's a challenging thing. But if you want to be in relationship, if you want to be close to people in this life, we have to find a way to love people who are different from us, people who have different opinions. And the church has so often segregated itself, split itself, divided. We have to agree to be a church. Now, I agree that there's some things that we have to agree on, but we don't have to agree on a lot of things. In fact, I would love to be a church that disagrees. I would love to be a church where we say, I love you, before we say, do you agree with me? And a church that has different positions but still loves each other, I believe is a sign that we are walking in Christ, because that's what he does. He loves people who, agree, who disagree with him. He loves people who agree with him. He loves a sincere, he loves everyone, and he just really enjoys a sincere heart. If you want to live in the fullness of the Spirit, this is a path I would encourage for you. This isn't just about, oh, Cyrus has a church and he doesn't want to hurt anybody. This is a life lesson. This is us actually living out what's in the Bible. If you want a vibrant spirit, you could say, well, if I'm going to have a vibrant spirit, I should just be amongst people who agree with me because it's comfortable, and comfort is a vibrant spirit. No, that's a comfortable spirit. That's what that is. If you want a spirit that is alive in Christ, we need to follow what he says to do, and he says to love people who disagree with you. He says to love them. Now, when you have people who are hurting you or doing different things like that, I'm pro-boundaries. Like, there's boundaries that we have with each other. So that's okay. That's, can't balance everything in one talk here, people. We, we have different things to think about here. But right now, I'm talking about love. I'm talking about respecting each other, honoring each other, working hard to be together, working hard to see each other, working hard to, to offer Christ to each other. To say, your destiny in God is connected to me. We all get further in God if we're all following him. That is a biblical principle. Paul says, pray for me. Why is he asking other believers to pray for him if it's all just about what he does? If it doesn't matter? It matters, people. If we are following God together we can go further in him. He releases these things to us as we pray for each other, as we're in community. If you want a vibrant life in Christ, find somebody who you disagree with and love them. Love your enemy. Don't just put up with them. Pray for them. Pray that the Spirit encounters them. If you disagree with me, pray for me, love me, offer the spirit to me, don't put a negative comment on the video.
That's what we're called to do. That is what God is calling us to do as a church. There's been division in the church. Maybe I'll ask the worship team to come back up. There's been a division in the church as long as there's been a church. People have disagreed. If God said only churches that agree with each other can exist, then we would have figured this out a long time ago. There is a pinnacle time when the spirit and the bride will be in unity. That is coming. But we're not there yet. So what does God want to do with us? What does he want us to do with him? What does he want us to do with each other when we disagree? We typically pull away from each other. But God loves us and tells us, come closer when we disagree. When we are sincere, we are still fair in his eyes. We're still beautiful. I want us to help each other to draw closer to him. And we don't want services that are just technically open. We want services that are really open. We want services where people can feel loved and accepted, where people can come to church and encounter the Spirit. My prayer is that this division would end. My prayer is that we would all be feeling comfortable with each other again. And my prayer is that we would agree that the Spirit would give us agreement. But as long as there is disagreement, my heart is to love everyone. And I pray that you would take that heart on yourself. How can I love in COVID? Love people who I disagree with. Father, you are a beautiful God. You are a loving God. You have given us this heart, this spirit that just pulls away from others when we're in darkness. But Lord, you want to give us light. You want to heal our hearts. You want to come and help us to draw close to people who we disagree with. To be more and more like you. We're so prone to this darkness where we judge and pull away and get angry. But Lord, we want to obey what you're saying. We want to make a place for every person. Lord, encourage us. Help us to pray for each other. Now, if you disagree with me, if you're part of Maple Crest, or even maybe if you're not, if you disagree, that's okay. I would love to hear your voice. Now, when coming to this, we have talked to people from all, like there's people from every camp in our church. We have tried to talk to people. We have asked about how this works for them, how they feel. We've tried to pray through this. It's not perfect. If you have feelings about this, if you have thoughts about this, we want to love you and we want Amen. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Father. I'm so thankful for today's message. It's so timely. God, you give us words to speak so that the world can know you. There's nothing more important than that. I'm so thankful for a pastor who is humble and kind and generous. And I thank you, Father, that his heart is for you and for us to know you. There's nothing better. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the lamb who was slain.
say you are worthy. Say you are worthy. Break the power of COVID over the church in the name of Jesus. Jesus name. We can be one. Amen. I have this beautiful picture of like a knit sweater. Maybe it has a tear in it. But as I see that tear, it's like a hole that actually looks like this. It looks like praying hands, that hole. Okay, so that's what I see. And I pray that that's what we do with that whole as a church, that we pray. And as we do that, then that knit, that knitting happens and there's no more hole, there's no more space. Hallelujah. We pray, we pray, we pray. Jesus. We say offense has to go. Yes, Lord. Peace. Mm-hmm. You're my brother. You're my sister. Mm-hmm. Let your love rise up in us. Help us to love each other. Give us wisdom. Give us ideas. Give us thoughts on how we can love each other. Give us gestures, Lord. Let your spirit come. Empower us to love each other. Lord. I'm excited for what's coming. I'm excited to be together again. Lord, help us to just find ways to be together. Thank you. We're stronger together in you. We can help each other connect with you. We can encourage one another. touched by the Holy Spirit this morning. You can stay connected with us. We'll be back here the next week. 
just going to carry on here. I'm going to give it over to Marianne just to worship. If you're in the, if you're in the spirit, if you're, the Lord is touching you, just say, so just let him move your heart. Let him move your heart. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Living water. Spring forth in us. Mm -hmm. A fountain overflowing.
shared with his disciples and he said this is my blood this beautiful picture of then we take that and we take it as communion I really encourage people to do that in their homes and we're going to do that here together as well in the near future just so we can recognize and remember and just bring to our own remembrance that that is shared so that we can experience that blood blood-soaked life, like what that looks like is cleansing, healing, delivering. Hallelujah. And we, you know, we talk about soaking in God's presence. We talk about soaking. Hallelujah. It's your blood that cleanses me. with him so it's like we partake of his suffering that we brought that of ourselves any kind of suffering this happens mentally this happens physically and it's like that sharing is like now that's there that's on the cross that's in the blood our suffering is in that and so then when we drink we receive now the transformation of new life that was shed for us to have forgiveness his body was broken for us to have wholeness we receive it of the crushing of the olive for there to be oil the oil of joy for mourning he was crushed so that we wouldn't have to be crushed hallelujah if we experience crushing it's natural we're in a human body <laughs> we remember that he was crushed we take it there we take that moment there
transformed by the renewing of my mind. Mm. Renewing my mind to the truth. Jesus, Jesus. Mm, Jesus. Greater. 